Hey guys, it's Chris. From artificial limbs to maps that we still don't know how they were made, join me as I reveal 10 amazing ancient artifacts that were way ahead of their time. Number 10, Ancient Computer. So when I say ancient computer, I'm not referring to the Apple II or some of the first computers ever made. I'm actually referring to a computer that apparently dates back to 200 BCE near Greece. Now before you say, that's impossible, know that this isn't your typical kind of computer. In 1900, a shipwreck was found near the Greek island of Antikythera, which weirdly was also the name of the ship that was found. In the wreckage, they found an old analog computer, which meant that they used the device to determine things that were going to happen in the world, without the need for electrical parts or databases of memory to calculate things. How they were able to come up with this, though, is a bit of a mystery. Specifically, this type of computer was used to help trace the positions of stars, as well as determine the next solar or lunar eclipse. The next type of computer like this wasn't made again until the 14th century. This is a really interesting piece of history, and it goes to show that though true computers were still a thousand plus years away, the concept of one was already in the minds of man. The computer itself is currently the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. Number 9. The Telescope or Nimrod Lens When you think about the study of the stars, you no doubt think about how various people across the recent centuries used telescopes to discover the planets, the stars, and things about our solar system, galaxy, and the universe at large. What's more, it's officially stated that the first telescope was invented in the Netherlands all the way back in 1608. But is that really true? One artifact seems to indicate that the telescope was at the very least conceptualized and built in a form over 3,000 years ago from where we are now, which would be long before 1608 in every metric. This is the discovery of the Nimrod lens, an artifact that was discovered back in 1850 in modern-day Iraq. Now, something important to note is that while many people do think it's a predecessor to the modern-day telescope, there are others who think it had other functions, including a burning glass to start fires. While this may seem lesser in function, it's actually the opposite. Because to have made something like that 3,000 years ago and understand how it would have worked in regard to the sun's rays would have been very impressive indeed. It's also been stated that it could have been a magnifying glass because it magnifies the looks of an object by a factor of three. Which is important to note because that's what the range of magnification for the first telescope was. Another note is that the Assyrians, who ruled in the time that the lens was made, were very knowledgeable about astrology, which further lends to the fact that this this could have been some kind of telescopic device. Number 8. Nanotechnology Lycurgus Cup In the world of technology, the notion of small machines doing work is known as nanotechnology, and it's said to be the future in regard to how things are built, repaired, and more. However, the Romans technically had modern technology beat in that they had a cup that did the work of nanomachines millennia before the idea of metal machines were even born. This is the tale of the Lycurgus Cup. The glass chalice known as the Lycurgus Cup, because it bears the scene involving King Lycurgus of Thrace, appears jade green when lit from the front but blood red when lit from behind. For a long time, the reasoning behind the shifting colors of the cup baffled scientists. That is, until in 1990, some broken fragments of the cup were studied, and to the astonishment of the researchers, they found that the Romans had been able to put into the chalice small traces of gold and silver, which would help the chalice change color under various lighting situations. When hit with light, electrons belonging to the metal flex vibrate in ways that alter the color, depending on the observer's position. The fact that early Romans were able to do this on a nearly microscopic level in regard to putting the particles of gold and silver in the chalice is still something we don't quite understand. So much so that some believe that this was an accidental creation versus one that was intentional. But given the Romans' flair for art and creation, we can't say they didn't intend for this all along. Number 7. Robots Many sci-fi series and movies have depicted the creation of robots in various ways and have them in various looks and forms. Some have them looking like humans, and others have them looking like various other creatures depending on their creator. To this day, robotics is still a major field of science, which makes it all the more curious that such a field may have been started by the Chinese over 1500 years ago. 
While there's no direct evidence to prove that the Chinese made robots, we do have the words of Emperor Lan Ling of the Han Dynasty, who noted that he had a robot or some kind of automation that would bow to guests and even offer them a drink. It would said it could dance as well. Furthermore, there is Dai Feng Ma, a Chinese designer who was stated to have not only made artificial birds that could help detect the wind and the weather, but also made something that served as a dresser to the queen. These are just some of the examples of ancient Chinese robots, and each one is capable of boggling the mind giving their advancement, despite the time period. One must wonder what else might have been created should time have allowed it. It should also be noted that while there are many robots in the world today, some of them aren't able to do some of the feats that these Chinese robots did without great difficulty. Number 6. Prosthetics and Artificial Limbs Without a doubt, one of the most important fields of technology right now is that of prosthetics, or the creation of artificial limbs. Advancements have been made so that limbs can not only be made, but function in part or in whole like real arms and legs. To an extent, of course. Many feel this is groundbreaking technology, but in truth, the growth of the prosthetics field is much more recent than you might think in the scale of history such as the 19th century. This particular arm here was made in the Victorian era, and yet feels and looks like it was something made in the modern day due to its detail and shape. Even certain prosthetic limbs today don't go into the detail that this particular one did, and as research into it progressed, it was revealed to have been able to not just have its own fingers that could curl up, but an adjustable wrist. Furthermore, its elbow joint used a spring for full mobility of motion. Perhaps the biggest mystery of them all, though, is who was the creator of the device, as well as who it was for. And we have no answers to this, but it is still an incredible piece of technology from the past. As a result of that, it's being displayed right now in the London Science Museum. Number 5. Gilding There are some processes that we know from the ancient world that are still in use today. But when you compare the two forms, ancient versus modern, you'll see that the ancients did it a lot better than us. One of the best examples of this was gilding, or the process of making something look golden via gold leaf or paint. If you look at various ancient structures across many cultures, including the Greeks, Romans, Chinese, Japanese, and more, you'll see this kind of art form. But what has surprised many who have studied it is that their techniques are so good and refined that it dwarfs anything that modern man has done with better technology. For a good example of how long this has been going on, there's a temple in Turkey that was gilded over 8,000 years ago, and its style and detail to gilding trumps what was made in 2020 by professionals at the time. One of the theories that leads to a possible explanation is that the ancients had certain techniques that helped them gild without much effort, or without modern power. One such belief is electroplating. However, that technique was stated not to have been made until the 1900s. Another theory is that gold film was applied to things via mercury, which would have been deadly to artists over time, and thus wouldn't be in use now. Either way though, whether it was these techniques or others, ancient artists were masters of gilding. Number 4. Telephone and Cups on a String The telephone, born from Alexander Graham Bell, was an invention that truly helped shape the modern world, and there's not that we know of an invention from the ancient world that predates this particular device. However, if you remember the child's version of the telephone via cups on a string, you might think that it was based on Bell's legendary invention, but it wasn't. It was actually based on a more ancient invention that was well before Bell even came around. In fact, this particular device was created by people over 1,200 years ago, and one of the devices is still being kept at the Smithsonian right now in their collections. Now, the biggest downfall of this particular device is that it's made of gourd and twine, which doesn't age very well. As a result, it's so delicate that we cannot test whether it truly works. But given the design of it, it'd be weird for it to be anything else. Here's another kicker. The tribe that made it was from Peru, and known as the Chimu Empire. They have no spoken language that we know of, however, the twine of this device was 75 feet long, and as a result, would be useful as a telecommunications device should it work, which many assume it does. Number 3. Baghdad Batteries The modern battery is one of the most important technological breakthroughs of modern times, but in the ancient days, they may have had their own kind of battery. This is not speculation though, as a site in what was Mesopotamia and now Iraq found a special jar that was believed to be an ancient form of battery. The jars were of terracotta, but the insides contained a copper rod and a spike as well as asphalt cork on the top. 
but before it was sealed, the battery was said to be filled with an acidic liquid. Most believed it was either lemon or grape juice. The result was something that could indeed produce an electric charge. Many have gone back and forth as to what the use of such a battery was for back in 250 BC to 250 AD when they were believed to have been made. And it got so divisive that it actually ended up on the show Mythbusters. They tested whether it could be used for electroplating, and they found that it could indeed work. Then there was acupuncture, via using the electric jolts to ease pain like in some modern day practices. And that also did work to an extent. And then given the times, they tested whether it would work as a religious experience. All three were found to be plausible, but the catch was that a singular battery didn't have enough juice to really do much of anything. But put enough of them together and you did get results. Whether the Mythbusters or other scientists are right in their beliefs about the batteries is unclear. But one thing is very clear. These batteries were made for something. Number 2. Miniature Boxwood Carvings There are various cultures who made sculptures depicting their religion, their gods, or even important moments in their religious history. However, in the Netherlands, they took it to another level with their miniature boxwood carvings. The idea of carvings with wood to make sculptures is millennia old, and so that in and of itself isn't really ahead of its time. However, in regard to these miniatures, the sculptures are so small and detailed that people are literally puzzled as to how anyone could have sculpted them and then kept everything in place over time. 135 of these sculptures were found, and just as important, all of them date back to 1500 to 1530 in the Netherlands. That suggests that it was a single person who made all of these. But as to what way that person did them, well, we'll never know. Even with modern technology, this kind of sculpture would be difficult. Not just in regard to getting the models to look how you wanted, but also the placement of the figures. Each object within the sculpture is helped by piercings and joints. But they're smaller than a seed of grass, and thus can only be seen under an x-ray. Given that level of sophistication, how could someone from the 1500s make not just one of these, but 135 of them? We may never know. Number 1. Ancient Sumerian Star Map If you look at the history of astronomy and astrology, you'll be shocked to learn just how much our ancestors learned and knew even before the birth of the telescope in 1608. But what might be the most shocking truth of all is that over 5,500 years ago, one Sumerian astrologer was able to make a star map on his own. And get this, it was incredibly accurate. But now you might be wondering, why would someone from 5,500 years ago even want to make a star map? In this case, it was for a very specific reason. Mainly at the time, there was an asteroid that was coming towards the Earth, and the astrologer wanted to track its movements across the stars and thus made a star map to help do just that. As for when we discovered it, that would be in an underground library in Iraq in the 19th century. This is where things get very interesting. The map had very detailed and accurate looks of the stars and constellations, and through this he was actually able to predict where the asteroid would land within one degree of accuracy, which is astounding given the time period. If you're curious, it landed in Austria. Thanks for watching. Can you believe what these ancient cultures came up with? Do you know any other ancient marvel that could have made the list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.